chaos. Uh, are there any citizens here except our friend from the play today? So I'm going to dispense with reading all this stuff, but I just want you to know you're welcome, and if you have anything that you would like to say, Good, yeah. just have so much give me the high <laughs> <laughs> You sit right here, Leslie. Okay. We should just get you uh, a chair. Yeah. Yeah. Those chairs look way nicer than these. <laughs> I got them right there in the hall. You can have it. Yeah. Review yeah. draft agenda for the regular board meeting on May 2nd, 2019. I'll, I'll turn it over to Mr. David. Yes, ma'am. So good morning. Thank you, everyone, for being here this morning. Um, you know, sorry I couldn't go to the Reinhold breakfast this morning. And we had great support there. However, I was at Clay Senior High School. And this morning we had the, uh, the National, I think it's Academy, uh, the National, what is it, NCAC? Yeah, National Coalition. Coalition, Career Coalition that is there to look at creating a national model for um, our criminal justice program. Oh, cool. That's one of our uh, you know, initiatives for our strategic plan and to celebrate and to identify <laughs> national models within our pathways. And uh, today they're going through the review process. And uh, Mr. Connor, Mr. You know, Ms. Polk, Ms. Mosley, working with staff over there, it's going to be a great day. So uh, fingers crossed that they come out with that national model. And uh, but was, uh, you know, I was glad to go there and kick it off this morning. All right, so the first one, we'll do some recognitions uh, in this board meeting. Bless you. The Clay County academic team will be recognized Ooh. during our board meeting. That's always a, an exciting time. In addition, we'll go through the 2019-2020 Drug-Free Schools calendar winners. I always get a nice calendar every year to see those winners and celebrate them. And then recognize outstanding 2018-2019 school volunteers within, within Clay County District Schools. The student is like Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, C1 is the minutes for the school board workshop along with student hearing and regular meeting for April 4th as well. C2 is the personnel consent agenda. Nothing major on this consent agenda. You will see that John Ward's date has transitioned from, uh, it was originally from April the 16th and it now has been pushed to May 1st. He will start with us on May 1. And then we have a, uh, a supplement for Title I lead, which is in, embedded here as well. As well. It's just a it, it's just allowing individuals within that school, to, regardless of their entire one school or not, to be able to be available for supplements within within the school as well. Yes, ma'am. I did have a couple of questions, yes, uh, just just for clarification for myself. Yeah. Um, on one of those supplements, it listed, um, uh, and I'll just give example sure. Tony Battle, and it showed, but it, it says a resignation and then an appointment, but it doesn't look like the thing changed. Is that just? Um, I can research yeah. Tony Battle. I mean, he's just one I happen to pick up. That yeah. So, yeah. There are um, a couple that are like there's, that. Yeah. There's one that, little glitch with BP and converting. This is be our second month and okay. okay. using the new okay. system. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other was some out of field people that looked mm -hmm. very similar, but they were. Right. If they're, if they're out of field and then they became in field at the same school. It had a formatting issue with the way that that's presented on the agenda. But I can if you give me specific names. I can certainly email you. There, there were really just a group of uh, about let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six people just, that I was asking about. What's, there. what's the first name on the there? first one? Is uh, Hallie Adams. Hallie Adams at Ridgeview High. And the, those those six that were on that page, that which just had some questions about the out of field. Sure. Thank you. Definitely look at it, and you know, Business Plus always uh, the, the new implementation. We'll see some uh, red flags. We'll get it right. Okay, thanks, ma'am. C3 is the approval of the purchase of K-12 Florida LLC virtual instruction curriculum. Uh, currently, we have been using Pearson to do our work in K-5, and uh, this has been really troublesome for teachers because they have to go in to use Pearson, and they have to really rebuild the core curriculum. So now we've transitioned to a new platform. We believe that it'll be, uh, it has greater interactive interactivity for our teachers, and it's less time going and building the, uh, the, the courses and bring it on board K-12 Florida, which is just a better product. And for the K-5 perspective, it'll be around the uh, top of $75,000 for implementation. C-4 is a approval for purchase of Edgenuity, which is our virtual instructional curriculum as well. Uh, currently, we are using the Florida virtual curriculum, which we are the, it's costing the school district around $575,000. Uh, being able to go to transition to Edgenuity, uh, that's going to save us money. We'll be able to spend around $351,000, and we'll get a real good, complex, uh, more interactive, teacher-friendly platform as well. This is what we're using for any recovery uh, within our school, uh, high schools and junior high schools as well for courses. 
And uh, we're uh, currently, they've given, they've given it to us to pilot to see if we like it and interact with it. We found that it's been favorable with our, with our educators and our leaders and through our students. And then this is just brings a, a better availability to customize curriculum and, ag and address our students in a better way for progress monitoring through their assessments. So being able to save money and going in a different direction, I think it's going to help us. And it gives us consistency and alignment. C5 is the approval of out-of-county travel for K-12 academics. Here we have science fair, band, weightlifting, the, you know, yearbook, FFA, they're all going everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so any trips you see, somebody's going to North Carolina, somebody's going to California, and we see great trips for our kids being exposed to experiences outside of the county. National Science Fair again. Yes, ma'am. This, I want to, I want to take stock of this young man. He yep. was just amazing. Yep, they continue to, two, he's got two. And, two of yes, them. Yes, right. there are two of them going, and they're, what, ninth grade, 10th grade? They're, no, I think I'm not going to go for ninth grade. I think they're, no, not ninth. ninth. They're 10th or 11th, I mean, they're, I they still they have they another eight, year or something. Eight, yeah. Eight, yeah. Eight, yeah. Yes, so it's, right. a, it's exciting for our students, so they're going to get a chance to, to, to travel and compete. Well, this is Mr. Chen's second year in a row, right? He, he, he was awesome last year, and he's back, he was back again this year, so very high and in, intelligent. Well, Mr. Connor, FBI. please let us President. know after the uh, state president. It's in May, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Please let us, the board know mm -hmm. how they do. Absolutely. Curious. Mm -hmm. C6 is a proclamation for uh, National School Nurse Week. We will celebrate that from May the 6th through May the 12th. Mr. Davis, I can jump in there. Sure. I apologize. Professor. I just learned last night that the Florida School Health Association has um, identified Chris Reedy, our own coordinator hey. of nursing, as the school nurse supervisor of the year for the state of Florida. Oh, awesome. Oh. So I just learned about it. So I think that we ought to That's bring awesome. that up. So. Uh, when we get to that, uh, Ms. Bush, if you'll put a little reminder under this item, mm -hmm. I'll be sure that, um, okay. in fact, awesome. I'll turn it over to Mr. McCauley, uh, and he can really... Her, her ceremony at the state um, conference is next week. Uh, it's on Wednesday, I think, so Thursday. By Thursday, I'll have all the details. Yeah. Okay, good. It's awesome. But I think, I think that's it's something wonderful. we definitely, because... You know, in the social media, I mean, you've read about the deck of cars and all that. We, we need to really uh, honor this. Yeah, it's awesome. C7 is the Clay County uh, District Schools Operation Financial Single Audit that uh, has already been sent to everyone just to just bring it to the board for final approval. We see the majority of the, um, the in the operational sides dealt with uh, the building of dough. We were really, you know, we still stand by our decisions for what we did with Mr. Connell and Dr. Kemp. We, we, you know, we stand by our decision. We think we did a good job with it. We were in, and rightfully so. But they had some historical findings around the state, and they, uh, you know, that we are attached with those as well. Also, you see the pre-K. I still believe in pushing legislators to involve pre-K in our best and the brightest. They, these are our teachers who are certificated under the K-12 course umbrella. And we should have continued to do this. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. We will push legislation, and hopefully we can uh, continue to be the, the leading district to celebrate these individuals and, and properly compensate them in a way they should be doing it. Have you, have you talked to Senator Bradley and Representative mm -hmm. We have. About this and they have. They, were, they, they understand that they're, they're under that umbrella, and they understand that they should be in part of this process. Absolutely. So hopefully, uh, you know, we have a number of counties calling me and superintendents thanking me for, for taking the initiative to put it out there, because now it starts the conversation within the state. So. You think it'll happen? Uh, we, we hope. We definitely hope. So you well, never know. And it's, and it's looking it's not just at the pre-K, but also looking at the guidance counselors, yeah. looking at the school psychologists, everyone who is not considered yes, part of that it's just, it's just bonus. Uh, support unfair. facilitations. Any of them. All of them. I, I mean, it's I just agree. ridiculous because yeah. they're all certified teachers right. or certified professionals. Right. They should well, be and considered. And we all espouse the value of early childhood education. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I don't know why we don't put them anywhere else. Yeah, I just don't understand. So we, we pushed the uh, Department of Education. Still at this point, they haven't responded, but uh, I have some phone calls out today to some, um, some people in Tallahassee about some other stuff, and this will be a, another issue that I speak to. Excuse me. Um, because they might want to put something in there about the unfairness of them being excluded. Mm -hmm. So they, it wouldn't hurt to kind of get the word out right. that we are trying to change it. Thank you, and, and then our financial audit was really solid once again, so uh, really, really good, and um, you know, it's good $4 million doing right things financially. 
Uh, also, we have on C8 the charter school audits. They just look at overall, making certain that money is used properly in funding. They don't do a deep analysis as such as ours, but uh, everything was fine with the, with the three charters. C9 proposed allocation changes for 1819. You see here that uh, we are asking to bring on a coordinator for the coordinator of internal accounts on a earlier so that they can work side by side. Mrs. Ronnie Campbell, who is uh, rightfully so retiring. So just looking at bringing someone on the double staff to, to have a seamless transition in succession management. Uh, C10, proposed allocation changes. These are uh, some changes you see with the ESE assistance, and we brought on some maintenance, uh, two maintenance positions with the kitchen technicians we talked about last month with our, co our commercial equipment. We see that we've also deleted the internal auditor director and, and added the coordinator, and you see some transitions between allocations of specialists, which are generally uh, movements, and then uh, just, you know, there's a watch when it looks at the chief academic officer and assistant superintendent to make sure that we're clean and the staff allocation overall. Um, you see some uh, other federal fundings being uh, adjusted and added, and you see athletic supplement for Keystone's wrestling Thank program. Thank you, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to for equity and, and fairness. C11 is amendments to our reports for March of 2019. We're required to bring amendments for anything with our budgets. C12 is the financial reports for March of 2019. <coughs> C13 is the internal um, account audits for the school year of 2018. Uh, this school year, we bring audits uh, every single year. And this is a part where we see in the last three years our lowest number of findings that we've had. So, uh, you know, moving from 613 last year to 438. And, uh, you know, while we, 438, we continue, we say, hey, we got to bless you in every opportunity. The celebration is that we continue to decline in um, the number of audits and findings within our school district. So that's just a celebration to our bookkeepers, celebration to our leaders and the internal audit to make sure it's important. We still have ways to go, even though we decreased in the, in the following areas with purchase, you know, making sure that everybody gets approval before they make purchases. I know that sounds like, uh, you know, that should happen all the time. It, it doesn't, but we've declined. It's still an area of, of, of angst. And also making sure that the fundraiser documents are filled out appropriately and approved <coughs> by district staff. And then the other thing is something that's a catch-22, we've declined in it, but we see that uh, staff, you know, potentially sometimes holds money. And if you're at a late event and there's nowhere to have access to the Dropbox or, or something, you got to you know, hold the money. So look at different procedures and processes internally to help staff with that so that doesn't become a, a finding in the future. C14 is deletion of certain items here. Once anybody wants a 1985 portable sound system or refrigerator <laughs> laptop or, or 1995 vinyl sign maker, it's all here. And, uh, a total of around $52,000 of, of stuff that we will, we will send out to, for, to sell to the community. Does anybody ever buy that stuff? They buy it all the time. You they buy it all the time. Okay, good. Yeah. They buy it and you'll see it on eBay the week after. Yeah, for <laughs> three times the money that we sell. <laughs> Robert does a good job. Robert Johnson does good work. Well done. Right. So I do a buy, a buy high and say a low. That's right, yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, yeah, it's interesting. So, we still got that Crown Vic out there, everybody. It's 1982. Ooh. May not have seats or steel well, but we're selling it. <laughs> yeah, Kevin may need it. Uh, C15, which is <laughs> the bid a bid award process for, our, for um, RFP. This is the first one, was about our relo uh, relocations and relocatable of our portables. This was um, uh, awarded to. LaRue and AJS building uh, and leveling. This is a three year um, uh, sign and agreement and award, which is already going to be over three years, $450,000. And we talk about the expensive movement of portables. They really are expensive. And mm -hmm. Doc can tell you every day how much they are. And uh, the second thing was the um, independent auditing services for the school district. And through this process, the uh, Purvis Gray and Company was the award winner. They continue to be working, have great working relationship with us as a school district. It's a five-year with the option to renew in three years, and it will be over the five-year period of $530,000 cost to the school district. C16 is a change order for... Oh, I don't mind. You, must be you want the money back, Miss? Miss uh, <laughs> change order. So this is direct services, so we get around $16,000 back to the school district. 
Ooh, that's a celebration. That's a celebration. Yeah, that's good. You you can bring it every, <laughs> every day, right? right? If they're like that. <laughs> it's actually kind of back to the general fund or back to the AIDS program. Uh, it'll come, well, we actually gave them some funding, so uh, it'll probably come back to general uh, go, go, our, our general fund pot because we've helped them initiate it. So. Uh, C-17 is a final completion of Keystone Heights Renovated Science Labs. They've waited uh, patiently for us to make sure we have gas and water. We had new electrical fixtures and furniture, so they're uh, up and running and excited to, to continue to work. Speaking of Keystone, what is right. that situation with the sewers? With the sewers? Yeah, that's a situation that will be uh, addressed in the summer. So it's just a pipeline that broke underneath um, 20 feet deep. Underneath the gym? Yeah, like it's underneath the gym. And um, yeah, there, there's never it, yeah. yeah, so there's never any there, there's never any uh, uh, time that, that, that uh, we were into a part where students or, or the, the property was exposed to anything unhealthy. Right. Please know that. Yeah. But uh, when you have 20 feet down, it's going to be a major rebuilding project. You know, you had to have strategies to get through the school year. And we will, in the summer projects, it's an immediate project that we will address. And after we run pipe in through the um, uh, underground to, and under the gym oh, oh, oh. To, to make it fluent. Mr. Dan, for the chairman, Mr. Dan. The, it's a perfect example of why things get bumped in the EFP. Right. So, I mean, it's an unplanned yeah. emergency okay. type project. It's going to be a minimum of probably at 400 grand to fix uh, what we need to fix because yeah. that pipe serves both Keystone Elementary School and the high school. So, yep. yeah. so we have to uh, we have to we have to deal with that. That's just that's right. just part of our life to make those adjustments and and uh, we'll do so if we need to. Was that determined because of aging or what? Because the gym is new, but. Uh, of course, elementary school is old, so it's, it's the it's the original. It's, right. Everything's oh, okay. original underground, and okay. we own all that, including the pump station. So, you know, one of the things down the road when we start looking at what we need to do with relevant to make our facilities relevant and making these type of upgrades, those are the type of upgrades that have to happen. Granted, they're not very visible. <coughs> you can see pipes under the ground, but I'm telling you, when you've got facilities that are on an average age of 60 years old, <laughs> approaching some in Orange Park. At a hundred years old, yeah. right. you know, stuff breaks. You know, um, and, and, and this pipe is—I mean, it goes clear across the campus, yeah, it goes elementary ground. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and Doc, we and through the chair, we've been in in partnership with um, all agencies, the hands on deck throughout the, the state and local agencies for them to review and make certain that we are doing the right things and taking the right steps. And, and everybody's been a, a beautiful partner and validating everything that we're doing. It's good. It's good for the community, good for kids, and good for school. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So C-18 is a change order to the science lab. So we did, uh, we are charging liquidation damages for $1,500 because they were a couple days late. So we're charging them $500 a day. So we'll take the $1,500 uh, to bring back to our school district as well. We put that towards storage. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Go back to supplies from the lab. C-19 is the, uh, the monthly pre-qualifications for our contractors and for our vendors. <coughs> C20 is a substantial completion of Lakeside Elementary School re-roofing project cool. and for building one. C21 is a change order to the Lakeside uh, School re-roofing building one. After they pulled the roof off, they did find that there was some additional damage to the decking. Anything that's uh, additional to the actual pulling off the roof and putting the roof on, we have it's an extra expenditure. So the decking we own, so it's around $5,900 that we have to address and be able to, to prep and get right before they put this uh, the, the new roof on. C-22 is the uh, restated concurrency uh, proportionate share mitigation development agreement with Governor's Park with uh, the, the development of regional impact. Mr. Pasta, do you want to speak to this? Yes. Um, this was actually enacted by the school board back in June of 2009. And we, we went ahead and agreed to the three school sites that were down there, but it's been sitting idle. And now there's a buyer. Um, the buyer is actually the developer of Nocatee, the park group. Um, and they basically want to build a Nocatee southbound here. So they had gone to the county back in uh, 2017 and changed the phasing. So they moved up the actual building of the houses. Originally it wasn't going to be com started until they even completed the road, but now the county went ahead and agreed to letting them start building whenever they're ready. It's still going to take a couple of years for planning. But they had really some non-substantive changes where they were just changing the name from Buttercup, which I believe was the Gustafson organization, to the new company. And they wanted me to give them some updated numbers uh, as far as their student generation figures. And 
Um, and the only question that we looked at was one of the school sites was actually outside the property. We asked them to bring it in, and they went ahead and made those changes. Good. Mr. Okay. Victor's already looked it over and approved it, and right. we're just putting it before the board. So they can complete the sale. That's what the issue is. Where is Governor's Park? I can't. If you know, it's, it's South Mountain 16, and you know where 15 kind of goes along? 15, Route 15 is in between uh, 17 and, uh, I guess, the, the Gustafson property. Mm -hmm. And in that area is where they're going to build that area. And it straddles the new road coming through. Right. Ah. And Mr. Super, through the chair, the, I know we're having a growth meeting, uh, a meeting about the growth in the end of May, but I'm going to tell you, if they build a river town not to tee south, which is what's going to happen down here in Governor's Park, mm -hmm. the growth that is coming mm -hmm. uh, to the south, southern end of Clay and southwest of Clay is going to be extremely significant, and, and uh, so that will be reflected in the May presentation on growth uh, as well and what we need to do to get prepared for it over the next decade. It's, it's you said that it's going to be on the 28th of May. Yes, ma'am. I, I believe it's a workshop yes, attached to a board. Attached to a board and workshop. Yes, ma'am. Village yep. plan. Yep. And growth. And, and, growth, and, growth. Yep. and okay. I will be giving a presentation at the Economical, the Clay County okay. Economic yeah. Development. Yeah. Development. The First Coast Expressway Summit. First Coast Expressway Summit about the growth, the expansion, the need. We're going to have to have great leadership here to do this work because it's it's coming fast and you've got to have someone that understands savvy finances and be able to put this up in, in, in a well-organized manner. So we have got work to do. All right, uh, D1 is the discussion for Special Action A. D2 is the public hearing for advertise for the Special Policies and Procedural Manual. Man and there's one more that I would like to add, and I just um, want to just pass it around, if I can pass it around. I give you all the documentation, all the board agenda review, and pass that along. This is Mutual Link. I sent a uh, I sent some information about two months ago with Mutual Link. This is a enhancement to a communication tool that where teachers on their phone and they have to voluntarily want to interact with this. It's on them. We're not going to push or push or pressure anyone. I've talked to Ms. Paiva about it. Uh, yesterday we had a meeting with all local law enforcement agencies. We had a meeting with uh, Fire and Rescue, Emergency Management in Clay County. This room was full of, of personnel from the district and uh, Clay County District Schools would make the purchase and they would have access to this communication software. It's where a teacher on their phone can push multiple buttons. They can hold 911, which will link all law enforcement agencies immediately in fire and rescue. They can, call, uh, they can call an active shooter or a lockdown. They can call for fire rescue. They can call for first aid. They can call for immediate assistance on their phone. And that's those who are willing to participate. And uh, it just gives a quicker response time to, um, to, you know, versus picking up the phone, calling the front office, then someone figuring out what's going on, calling 911. Every teacher, every support staff should have the ability to make a call that warrants it within our schools. So, um, you know, yesterday was a positive. All of the, the local partners were excited about it. It comes to no cost to them. It's a cost to us as a school district. Uh, they wanted to purchase additional, and they not only do they get to you know have access and, and for immediate response, but they get access to our cameras immediately when we push that button. So they get a chance to see what's going on. So they and they have blueprints on this format. So if they say that we're going to school X in classroom Y, it comes up a blueprint. They can figure out where to go, and so they're not going to the main office and figuring out where do I go, what's going on. They can see live feeds and interaction. So. Um, this is going to be a piggyback off of Sem Seminole County uh, contract. Mm -hmm. And uh, Seminole County openly started off with 50% of their teachers voluntarily uh, giving their cell phone numbers because it's their personal cell phone numbers. And we're, you know, but after the Parkland, they shot up to 85% and they saw the value in it. And they believe that it's a, it's, a, it's a good resource. And this is us giving best effort to continue to address you know, the safety and the needs of, of, of our school district. So. And I'm assuming this money will come out of our numbers. So there's two pots of money right now. We have to potentially, and we'll work on it in the next couple of days. So we're trying to give the Department of Education because we do have grant funding that we could use for hardening because we put some software, or we could use the millage money. Okay. This doesn't. While we approve it, this while we approve it now, we will not launch this until July one. So it could potentially be the millage money, okay. and uh, but we would once approval, we would get it to interact with it for you know 60 days, and that's going to take time for the, the mutual link to set up all of the you know. Uh, blueprint plans and geo fences within our school because 
when I say geofences, they'll put up a network that when someone pushes the button, they know exactly where that person is in that school or on campus, and they can direct the services immediately to there. So this is marvelous. I'm thrilled to hear about this. Now, when do you want to put this on the agenda? I would like to put it on this agenda. Let's put it on and get this mm -hmm. going. Uh, so, Ms. Bush, please add this. My daughter teaches in Seminole County, and she has this. And not oh, only, just a, one of the things that once they do something with this, let's say if she gets a, a, a text that says active shooter, they then are able to follow up with additional information to each sure. of these phones. So let's say you get a lockdown drill and you've got all of your kids in and you're not quite certain what to do or what's going on, mm -hmm. you have access just to your phone. It doesn't come up over a speaker system. It doesn't come up on your computer that you have to leave a right. particular area. You have it with your phone and you can see exactly what's going on. They inform, <laughs> they inform people within reason, not every single solitary detail, but they, they inform you, and then they inform you when it's done as well, so that it's, it's the communication is there. there there's a, a communication goes back to the teachers as well. It's not just a help me button that's a, let's, let's see what's going on, so. We, we need to make sure that the uh, public knows about this. Gave them the stuff. Okay. Um, um, there's so many things we need to get the word out on. Well, there's a lot that we want to get the word out, but here again, it's a safety and security issue. Yeah. And we no want to get the word out, but we don't want to be too specific about yeah, what, yeah, sure. what we're, we're doing or why. Yeah. And I mean, that was, and that came but, up at the Middleburg sure. um, Listen and Learn. Yes, ma'am. Um, one of the parents was, was, she was thinking ahead and saying, well, if people know, what all of the plans are for everything, then they're just going to wait until you're not ready for them, and then they're going to it. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. We don't have a lot of people waiting to attack us, number one. But number two, it's, it's, that's why we're somewhat guarded as to what we share and what we talk about, because we want we don't want to advertise everything, but this is a good thing. This is a good thing. <laughs> this, is, this, is really good. Yeah, this is something that every employee will have access to. Every employee. If you have a cell phone. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. So if you remember to carry your cell phone. Yeah, if they offer up their personal phone number. Because yes. that personal phone number would then have to be uploaded to our, our current, our mm -hmm. Clay County District Schools Police Department, uh, Sheriff's Office, if they want to be a partner in this, which they were here yesterday, Green Cove, Town of Orange Park, Fire rescue, emergency management, <coughs> not access to all of it to be able to respond immediately. So are we talking Yes, ma'am. Hospitals, yes, ma'am. Yeah, First aid, everything. We're talking secretaries in the Anybody? office. Anybody? Can we get it on our phones? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, if you're out of school, you want to. That's what I mean. Why don't you just push you know, That would never occur. But. Yes, ma'am. Well, and we'll have to have extensive training there in pre planning, but I think it's beneficial for it. We'll see the value. Oh gosh, yeah. And, and we've had yeah. teachers, I mean, uh, you know, let's just say a teacher that, um, you know, falls out in the classroom and, right. and is on the phone and can't get up, they can have, they have their, if they have their phone, which I know that they may not have their phone, but they can ask somebody to get it and they can push that immediate panic button to, to do that, so. Well, and if it's next door and a student goes next door. Well, or the, if it's the phone is sitting on the desk. Kindergarten, if we will pick up the phone and say here. It's you know big red button. I mean, it's, it is. it's so it's good. It's good to decide to bring it. I'm, I'm tickled. To awesome. Okay. Well, you're done. Yes, ma'am. Oh, nice. Mr. Davis, I have one more thing to share. Another celebration. I just learned about it. So I, I learn things. I'll when y'all learn things as well. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Right. Actually, Ms. Stutter, Ms. Bullen, and and. Uh, Bullock all know this because they were there, but our own social workers got a $750 award at the Celebrate Clay mm -hmm. under the category mm -hmm. award for the Orange Park Outfitters. Oh, uh, cool. If you know that That's at, at Orange Park, Park, Park High School. School. And then mm -hmm. even more exciting is a special judges <coughs> award of $1,500 to our project reach yes. social oh, workers for homeless. Right. So yeah. Lake another Lake Asbury Junior High. Lake Asbury Junior High Music Program. They I don't know if you're familiar with that program, but they have students that are in the band teach ESC students mm -hmm. how to play instruments, awesome. which is, was wonderful. And then also saying. Paula Summers again yeah, from Oak Lee Village. She's not down the path. Yeah. So, awesome. I'll give them the calls. We'll get all of this stuff. Yeah, so and right. we don't even know what the last two were because we don't want to be like the, big, the biggest <laughs> prizes. But, yeah. but 
I tell you, just go into that. Just, <laughs> you just can't believe how much good is done in yeah, such celebration. It really is a great amazing. celebration. It is. Um, but that is, you might want to put that on your weekly thing. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it was four from our that our school least, district. Yeah. And then. Um, well, with pride, there, that would have been five, but I think it was some sort of that. And then the white three schools, yeah. five. And then the white program, mm -hmm. Tech Stock and Children, Sorry, that that's right. Yep. Me for our kids. They got a well, and $15. the first volunteer that was not that was mentioned was a former teacher at Ridgeview Junior High, Mr. Ballman. Right. And when I was substituting and getting my degree in education, he was teaching there. So I would sub near him, sometimes <coughs> sub near him. And when I walked in and we saw each other, it was like, whoa, <laughs> flash from the past. And he said, oh, somebody nominated me for about oh, a second. Okay. Well, then they went through this litany of everything he's accomplished. Amazing. Wow. I was just like, I mean, I tears. It I was, was very cool. cool. He is such and a he, dedicated person. look at him and tell he is just such an uncle man. Oh, you know, totally, just, yes. And I, the kids loved him. Loved he him. Got <laughs> the what was, the, he got one of the big awards. He got a volunteer, the, the first volunteer. Uh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Was it? I can't thousand? remember how much it was. Oh, yeah. It was a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it was a wonderful way to start the day. Yes. Um, okay. Um, let me see. No comments from the superintendent. Uh, school board comments. Uh, no. I have. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't put Mr. Bittner on here. Let's add Mr. Bittner. Mr. Bittner, do you have anything to say? Well, let me think. No. No. Well, I'm going to say something. Today, uh, 14 years ago, Bruce and Sabrina were married at Magnolia Point. I just happened to be there. Um, <coughs> also, he is a smart man because this is Sabrina's birthday. He's, his oh, goal is forget. he Tell only me. has one, one day time a year. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> but happy she would change her birthday. Is that what you're saying? But he said it's been 14 years. Awesome. Congrats, Sabrina. Wow. So, good, 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 good. good. Um, the other thing is, as you'll notice on this, I wanted to get input from the board. I have my own feelings about it, which I'll share. This is the performance evaluation for the school board attorney. Mm -hmm. And here's the situation. In, in our past years, we've done one midway through and then at the end. Well, since Mr. Bittner started with us midway through. My suggestion is is that with this, because it's just whether you're uh, checking off the uh, mid-year square or the final square, I say let's go ahead and this time by when, May? May. By May 1st? We do by May 15th. May 15th. That we go ahead and fill this out as the final and then we'll be starting off and be in sync you know, for all future years. Is that is that agreeable? Sounds good. So if y'all would take this and uh, fill it out under the final evaluation, okay, and then have it turned in by the fifteenth. To Miss Bush. Well, let's see. Fifteenth is a Wednesday. You email this to everyone. Okay, does that sound good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Chair, I'll have Miss Bush email this electronically. Sure, everybody has it. Yeah, because they can square it and get right. a copy. But uh, that'll take care of that. I just, it just seemed foolish to stay a half a year off. And so I thought, well, if we just go ahead and do the final, then we're back in sync again. So Sounds good. If y'all are agreeable, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all I have. Ms. Bowler, you said you I have, have two things that I wanted to bring up. The first thing, I talked a little bit to Ms. Davis about this, but I'm going to just keep bringing it up until perhaps it happens. I am under the understate, I'm feeling that with high schools that are above 2,000 students, we need more than one nurse or a nurse plus an assistant to assist. Um, I've talked to Mr. McCauley a little bit about it to get information about, I know, realize the volume of needs within the elementary schools are higher because we have younger children who are taking care of themselves. But when you're dealing with a student body that's literally a small city, um, it would be helpful, I think, to that nurse to have an assistant. So I, that would be two additional allocations for two high schools. Um, 
or one for each of the two high schools in about 2000. That's something I feel strongly about. I feel that there's a disconnect when we, I mean, it's, we tend to treat all of our schools equally or attempt to, but when you're getting to the volume of those schools, I can't imagine that if a nurse is called out of an office and something else happens on campus, that person can be in two places at once. So I don't know if all of the statistics and data warrants a second a person on the campuses. I am just concerned about, the, as I said, the volume of people that utilize the services of the health, um, the clinic. Um, secondly, you sent out an email regarding reading certification, yes, and I want a clarification on that. So I'm let, yep, I'm uh, include I'm a self-contained teacher, let's say in fifth grade, and I teach reading this year, but normally I teach math science. So the legislature has now passed, it's passed. a certification requirement for me as a teacher who teaches reading this year to have an additional $300, was it? It is $300. In training and certification. And that would then be part of my certification. Is that a re that the reading endorsement which we've had in the past? How is that different from the reading endorsement that we've had in the past? It's to, to the chair, it's, it's the same. Uh, it's same requirement. So I think it's 2021 that uh, individuals that teach students who have deficiencies in the area of literacy will have to go and become reading endorsed. Because, so well, I have just a, I clarification have, on that, as, an, in, as a self-contained teacher and as a, anybody who teaches reading in the elementary yeah, school you're going to be endorsed. is going to have to be endorsed. That's correct. Even so, though that's just a, I just, this is right. my one year I'm teaching it because we that's have, correct. we need mm -hmm. five teachers instead of six teachers right. because of the numbers. And so therefore, even though I normally teach math science because I have that one year, it's sort of like the old ESOL yeah, requirement. Say, it's just it's like just you get flagged like the for ESOL, yeah. and then that kid's yeah. no longer so, able to start and, the process. And, and, yeah. and with that, I mean, we every mm -hmm. every classroom right. has children with sure. needs. And right. so I'm hoping that we don't start building classrooms with just those teachers that yeah. are endorsed, and is this going to yeah. leave a lot of teachers out of field? So through the chair, uh, through the chair, the answer your question. No, 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 it, but we yeah. have to start now. So I sent an email to one person for review. She thought that I sent it out to the entire organization. I didn't, so it's no big, no big deal. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I were waiting. Was. It's okay. I mean, <laughs> she was just trying to help. So um, she's got a good heart and she's right. a good person. So we get to a point where we're waiting on the Department of Education to approve our plan because we have a plan right. for the next two and a half years, a year and a half, to be able to, to triage, which would be around six to eight hundred teachers that we would have yes. to be trained in reading endorsement. Um, there's a lot that goes with that. So training that we would have to, we'd have to offer multiple options so teachers can do that. And if they do not, then they will be projected out of field, which means they've got to do, you know, they've got to complete by a certain number, a certain time frame. This is going to be an issue throughout the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. So, um, but mm -hmm. we want to be ahead of it. So we're waiting on the Department of Education to our, approve our plan. Um, you know, we have uh, we have Jamie working on it, we have Connor working on it, Ms. Faye's working on it, and hopefully they'll get it back to us soon, any day. Then I will send a communication to the entire board, mm -hmm. along with the communication to the entire uh, field, so they know what options we're going to take on. Um, but I would tell you the other issue is this, and um, maybe I probably shouldn't say because it's bargaining. Okay. Um, there's a part of the contract that says, and I, I'll just say what the contract says, that way I'm just taking facts is that anybody that gets uh, a reading endorsed, it was that we incentivize them for to obtain $400. So if you were going to get reading endorsed as a teacher, which is a celebration, you receive yes, a $400. I mean, we're talking. Well, now we, need, we, need to be, you know, now we need to rethink because now it's a requirement. So that's, that's $320,000. So this certification for teachers, does it cost them anything to obtain? Uh, it's going to be $75. Yeah, $75. Nine? Oh, for the to add, yeah, to add, to add. To add. add. So you I think just it costs time, I'm, which is maybe a number of hours to sit, seat time and sit time and mm -hmm. virtual time. Yeah. Do the teachers have to pay that seventy-five themselves, or do we yes. cover? Yeah. Yes, because they're yeah. seventy-five because it's on their certificate. I just paid it to get recertified. Yeah. I just paid it to get recertified too. The ESC that's required twenty hours, and you have to add that. It's yeah. the same. Same. And if you have any additional certification, because you have to be certified in English, journalism. And other areas. It just seems like every time we turn around, there's something else 
on our teachers. And I, that's you know, exactly. it's just, well, the intent of it's smart. I the problem is, is that it's a uh, it's a rush process and it's mm -hmm. a cost process. Too. The other side yes. of that, it, are there any parts of this particular certification, and I'm just the wheels are yes, spinning, that can be used as part of the ESE credits? Mm -hmm. I think it's an isolation. Because mm -hmm. so I thought, well, they're really that, stringent about ELL, to be recertified ESL, every e e time, ESE. you have to take an additional 30 um, hours in ESE. Yeah, it's like 20, 30 hours. And it's, it's 20. Yeah. Oh, it's 20. It's Pardon 20. Me. Yeah, ESE. And it's that ESE. I mean, I've got enough to certify for another five years, mm -hmm. but I will have to take that additional 20 yeah, just use sometime in the next five years. Mm -hmm. I won't be teaching reading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reading, the best the reading is bankable. So. That's, which I is, have. That's which what I good, have. I've got some, but not 300. I've got right. like 120 that I have. Which is what you have for research. For the original, re the basic reading certification. So we'll see. Um, we'll, as superintendents, we'll push a little bit and see if they can make some adjustments. The and, other uh, side of that, I was talking to a teacher from one of our local private schools. And her comment yeah. was, oh yeah, my certification is lapsed. Yeah, they don't. I mean, I'm And I thought, yeah. how frustrating it is from a public school teacher's perspective to have to jump through all of these hoops determined by the legislature and I could go to one of the private schools, I could go to a charter school, I could go to one of the other private schools where vouchers are accepted, not sure. all of our private schools accept sure. vouchers, and there would be nothing. Yeah, they that do not have I to have credentials have teachers. To have, have to prove. Have a hard and time. I'm like, <laughs> I, it, that's one of my greatest yeah. frustrations. It should be. And it just, and it, there's no rhyme or reason. And I understand the opportunity for school choice. I get that. I understand that. But I just, I wish that there was more equitable yeah, requirements, requirements for all of our, our, our kids' college here. Kids. Bottom line, and instead of instead of saying, okay, we got it, you know, we're not giving a lot to the public school teachers, we're giving bonuses, but we're not going to cover all of the bonuses. We're only going to cover those that we think are important for <laughs> classroom teachers. But by the way, those classroom teachers have to take those additional 300 hours in order to jump through this hoop to get that bonus. To and it's like it's very frustrating, and I can understand why our teachers and why there are teachers who are leaving the profession, and it makes me incredibly sad. Ms. Bella, thank you for saying all the points you said. Now just take a deep breath. It's all going to be okay. It will, and that's and that's the, okay. and that's the that's the point, Ms. It'll Stutter, be. because teachers, teachers make it happen. Make it happen, they do. and exactly. teachers they are do. committed to but be the people that they are, and they choose they it. Do. They choose this profession because they are committed to but it. But hopefully, they know that we are as alarmed as they are about actions that and have angry. taken place. There's an and, uh, angry word in there besides uh, alarmed. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, but trying, that, to, I, yes. I'm trying to be You're polite. trying to be polite. I am polite. Okay, Ms. Bullock, any comments? Uh, yes, I just have a couple. First, I'm going to add a to Dr. Kemp and his department. I uh, got a text from uh, Lori Butler and with her classroom and a picture <laughs> of it. And she's so thrilled that she's oh, going to she have a, a nice setting and way for her volunteers to get in and out. So thank you so much for all of your help with that. What what did they do on getting in and out? We well, she's going. She said uh, moved to Orange Park Junior High, oh, okay. and they recarpeted it. It just looks really nice. She'd like to say, she just good. sent me a, a text. Good. The other thing is, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. McCauley, uh, the community schools concept in Keystone, and I know he's working with uh, Tina Baker on a new program that's pretty reasonable. Where it's going to be, what is it called? All here or? Uh, uh, it's an um, uh, an attendance monitoring and mm. intervention support program called All Here. Yeah. Um, we're working with a company, it's typically $1,000 a school, uh, but they're giving us a $500 grant for each school we put on, so we're gonna roll it out in approximately eight schools initially, yeah. um, particularly in the Keystone area, the 218 corridor, the Clay Hill, Wilkinson area, because those two groups of schools have some very robust attendance monitoring program systems in place. Right. So how does this work? Basically, it'll, it'll be an exchange, Jeremy Bunkley's been involved, it'll be an exchange of, of data uh, where we can quickly highlight students who meet certain thresholds where we wanna get in front of it before it becomes a problem. Um, and in doing so, it allows us to 
um, blast out messages to the kids, to their cell phones, like, hey, where are you? We miss you, kind of messaging, a little more positive. Um, it, includes some, it includes some intervention strategies that the school can work with the parents and, right. and kind of work Mental with the kids. Mental health, all yeah. kinds of Well, the big thing is that it just gives us another tool, right. quite yeah. frankly. And, and Keystone set up for it. Like the professor said, they have really focused this year, this entire Keystone community on attendance. It was adopted by the mayor's office, council, and and, and, and you can walk into a school and you'll see there'll be a board, whiteboards you walk into school, yeah. today's daily attendance is this, you we'll know, have we're trying to get to this. Here on time. I mean, they have all and kinds of That's what it takes. Uh, they don't come, well, can't educate. Yeah. And the other thing is the visitation to the houses yeah. for the kids who are doing well. Right. And that's I correct. just left my card because you, you're on the A honor roll or AB honor roll or exactly. you got a good grade on a test I mean, you or imagine whatever. imagine that unless showing up at your door and, and saying, just want to say what a great job you're doing. I mean, it's really, that is really uh, phenomenal. But uh, I really appreciate the, the support of that program. And um, I've met with Tina Baker. She's going to speak to our business association in August. We're going to have signs that the business can put in there. Uh, front of their yard about mm -hmm. being here on time, so we're going to get the whole community behind that. That's so, That's um, cool. uh, so that I appreciate that. And then I have a, a what's an update on the Wilkinson School with the arson? The uh, mm -hmm. did you uh, so right now? I don't know if we have any more information from the marshal's office. Okay. We do know that we captured uh, images for between Wilkinson Elementary and Wilkinson Junior High School of a young man. We took those images and then we pu we pushed them immediately to the uh, to the the marshal. And um, we haven't heard back. I'll check with Chief Wagner again today. He's been in constant communication because we're trying to, to either identify. I know they identified the, the student. Um, okay, the, they the, have. the person. They identified a name. Person. And the person, a, a name. So I've got to figure out, uh, follow up what happened on the visit to that home. So I'll try to get that today. Ooh, wow. wow. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Wow. And there's been an outpouring of support for that teacher. Oh, absolutely. From all, I mean, the foundation gave grants. I know you sure. said that there was a we They were doing collections at the church. All of the schools. Over in yeah. Middleburg at, um, what was the name of the business? But they were doing collections. Yeah. I mean, she. Will ever support the doctor. This community always. Time. They always come through. Yeah. That's correct. And, uh, and by the way, Garth Brooks was wonderful. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ms. Bullock, you're out of <laughs> You were down there in Gatorland. Right? <laughs> Gatorland. Hey, I bet it was a good it concert. It was a good concert. Yeah. Um, Ms. Gilhousen, okay. I did want to remind you that your trim notice mm -hmm. was here. We've already gone over these dates before, but the ones in red are the ones that we have to be at. And sure <coughs> you don't forget those. So two and of them uh, are existing meetings, so right. it's really only calling for one additional meeting. The July 30th. July 30th. Yeah. Okay. So we are good to go, and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.